Today I'm going to talk about how Scolia can be used to explore biodiversity related knowledge. Scolia is a Wikidata front end and this presentation is being given as part of the Mobilize Wikidata workshop taking place on 13 to 14th February 2020. You have here my name, my email address and my Twitter account and the DOI for the presentation. Um, the previous talks have already outlined some aspects of Wikidata, so this slide is more or less uh, somewhat of a recapture. Um, so, and it zooms in on how we can actually access the data in Wikidata. So the classical way Wikipedia inspired is to go to a single page, to look at the page, and then see what, whether the information that you're looking for is in there or whether there is anything that could be improved. Um, there are ways to automate these things. There, uh, you can download the data, you can query the data, and you can edit the data in various automated fashions. And all of that is explained on this page and these sub-pages. And then there is an ecosystem of tools, including some what could be called Wikidata frontends. And what these frontends do is they hide a bit of the complexity of um, Wikidata, but they surface some of the things that are hidden in the complexity. So, for instance, if you are on a Wikipedia page and uh, there are lots of links to other related concepts. You can't easily see any uh, content that is in the articles about those other concepts. Um, because yeah, you have only one screen, you might split your screen and put the two next to each other and there are some preview um, modalities or something, but you can't actually uh, put different pieces of information together um, because it's just text. In Wikidata, we have structured data and it's linked open data, which means that we can combine a number of things that are potentially even several steps apart in the knowledge graph and show them together on the same page. And this is essentially what uh, these front ends do. Um, and they do it for different use cases. So the Reasonator and Squid, they're rather generic. You can use them on any Wikidata item and mostly makes sense. Histopedia is specialized in timelines. Wikigenomes is a genome browser. Wikidata for digital preservation um, has metadata about software and presents that. Scolia does scholarly profiles and Audia does lexemes and there are a few others as well. <coughs> now um, a bit more on Scolia. So it uses the information in Wikidata to um, create profiles. So, and all the profiles that it does are somehow related to research. So it could be a research topic that is being profiled, <coughs> people who are doing research, research organizations, research awards, research journals, and so on. And I have linked here a number of examples. Um, we will see the to life later on. Um, the data that is being created is uh, all in Wikidata and uh, there are different communities in Wikidata that uh, contribute to the things that Scolia can visualize. So um, one of those communities is the Wikisite community which basically um, catalogs all the references in Wikipedia and its sister sites. Then there is Wikiproject Taxonomy, which deals with how taxa are being handled on Wikidata. Right now we have on the order of 2.8 million taxa indexed in Wikidata. Uh, then there is Wikiproject Invasive Species, that looks at um, relationship between species and certain habitats. There is Wikiproject Ontology, that looks at how data is being modeled and structured within Wikidata and how that 
corresponds to how similar endeavors uh, take place elsewhere and how Wikidata can be integrated with other knowledge bases. And then there are many, many other communities that contribute to um, the data curation in Wikidata and some of these are actually external um, because if some um, group of people or some institution provides open data in a structured format un, uh, in a way that is in public domain, then Wikidata can make use of that, and we often do. And uh, so the curation can happen both on Wikidata and elsewhere. Um, <clears throat> in Scolia, we try to actually eat our own dog food. So um, there, here is a page that you can use to find out about Scolia in Scolia. And then we really put an emphasis on documentation. So uh, lots of things around Scolia are documented relatively well, even though there is active development. And so essentially every documentation will always be a few steps behind. Um, but still, there, <clears throat> there is a lot of documentation. Now, this slide is the main one for this talk. And here I want to actually show you some Scolia profiles. But uh, first, let me do a bit more of framing. So um, in order to get profiles that are relevant to biodiversity, we can look at a number of things. So I, uh, apart from the different kinds of profiles that I already outlined, we could have events like this one. We could have taxa being profiled or the compounds or pathways in the taxa. And also, uh, um, there are lexemes. Wikidata is now embarking on a journey towards indexing essentially every word in every language. And at some point, this might well include all the taxon names. And uh, so, I'm, I'm bringing this up because that might actually feed into some of the discussions that we're going to have later on. Then uh, Scolia has a number of features and is integrated with a number of other tools that facilitate curation and exploration of the data. <clears throat> so for instance, um, the, the missing tool highlights known gaps in the knowledge um, so as to guide curation. You can compare different things of the same kind uh, in a shared profile. You can use external identifiers to uh, redirect to Scolia profiles. You can link from Wikipedia to Scolia directly uh, through a template. You can link from Wikidata to Scolia directly through a widget. Uh, you can do funny queries like um, identify the most popular typos about a certain taxon. Um, you can use, if you use BibTeX for writing your manuscripts, you can uh, basically offload the entire reference management to Wikidata and then pull in the metadata uh, for whatever you're citing through Scolia. Uh, and there are related tools that help you, for instance, disambiguate the authors of the references that you're citing. And then the queries that uh, combine different aspects, so for instance, the taxa and the chemical compounds. And um, that's where uh, much of the use in, uh, of Wikidata actually lies, because you have databases for taxa, there are databases for compounds, but the interaction between the taxa and the compounds is of the kind that is not always uh, easy to get some information about. So, in terms of the information that um, is known to be lacking in Wikidata related to biodiversity, uh, this is type specimens, it's collections, collectors, nomenclatural acts and their timelines and interdependencies, then phenotypes of all sorts, molecular, um, anatomical, behavioral, um, it's occurrence data and it's, um, so for instance, that's re very relevant to the invasive species and it's also uh, ecological relationships. Okay, so now let's have a look at some of those profiles. So here, let's start uh, with an event. A number of different um, menu options, things that can be profiled, and 
Um, yeah, that includes events or event series. So here you have a number of people that are known to attend the event. You see that co-author graph. Um, so this is apparently a very tight-knit community. Not surprising because it's an invitation-only event. Then um, we have topic scores. These are derived from the publications that the attendees of the workshop have done and the topic tagging that has occurred on them by the community. So there, there was no specific topic tagging for anything um, related to this event. It is just making use of the link token data because we have the we know who attends, or at least some of them. Uh, we know at least some of the publications that the attendees have produced. And for uh, at least some of those publications, we know the topic. And uh, so on that basis, we can then get an idea about the topics that are likely to be discussed at this event. Then there are uh, recent publications by people who are attending the event and there are no proceedings yet and then there are related events events that are related based on time and location and events that are related based on people who might be attending so here for instance we have an event where three of the attendees of this event uh, did participate about one and a half years ago okay so that was an event page now uh, let's have a look at a taxon and of course we need to go for a model organism so Cineroplytus elegans is one of the um, taxa I would like to show you today uh, it gives you first some representation of phylogeny um, there is some circularity in here which um, represents some uncertainty. Someone thought that uh, the relationship is not entirely clear and Wikidata can actually represent such ambiguities. Um, although it does have mechanisms to resolve them, um, if reliable sources are known to um, well, resolve the issue, and if those reliable sources are actually known to the Wikidata uh, people who are curating this kind of information. So all of this is clickable. And uh, for a taxon, we have, apart from the classical taxonomy, like the phylogeny, we have um, genomic information. So we see here that there are 20,000 genes for uh, Cineroptitis elegans that are indexed in Wikidata. Each of these has their own uh, profile. So let me just click on one of those and then see, okay, this has this transcript, it encodes this protein. If there were author logs or variants known, these would show up uh, on the profile as well. Um, in principle, we can also uh, index uh, the metabolome. Uh, it's just that uh, this is uh, only starting and so right now there's not much here. So for C. elegans there's nothing. Okay. Next one is compounds of compounds on the order of 100,000 indexed in Wikidata. Um, you see here the uh, Wikipedia, the snippet from the Wikipedia article, then combine this with some structural information, then identifiers for this uh, compound, um, physical chemical properties for the compound, sometimes related compounds. Uh, here, for some reason, I didn't find any. Recently published uh, publications on the compound and also uh, the timeline, how the number of publications on the topic have changed over, over time. Then, Compounds together uh, form pathways. Here we have integration with wiki pathways. Each of these um, 
basically molecules that are involved in the pathway. They have their own profile as well. You, you can click on that. So um, very similar to the one that we've seen. Uh, this one actually has orthologs. Yeah. And um, then we can say, oh, this is from this organism. Um, these are the genes involved in the pathway. Here are some publications about the pathway. Here are um, publications that cite this pathway and uh, how this develops over the year. All of this is right now rather incomplete because Wikidata has only started to index this kind of information. And so all the Scolia profiles, they have to be taken with a grain of salt because they just indicate it, some aspects of it, they're never complete or almost never complete. Then um, lexemes, so in normal Wikidata, you have a main namespace for the items and there is a different namespace for lexemes. Uh, this is prefixed with it, lexeme colon thing. And here, this tool is actually not Scolia, it is Ordia, which uses a very similar arrangement and it um, provides information about the words. So we, here we have the word water, which is the Proto-Indo-European word from which lots of words for water have derived, including the English one for water. And here we see um, a graph of how the different words in different languages actually are related. And uh, such things um, would well be imaginable for things like taxon names and uh, the revisions uh, of the uh, different components of them and so on. And uh, so I'm, I'm including this just to show that such things are possible. Right now this is not being done for taxonomy, but um, technically it's not far away from being doable. Yeah, then here the missing information for any organization for which we have a profile page, we could have different, we could look at that uh, from different perspectives. Uh, for instance, those things where we, uh, we know the string of uh, someone who works at the museum or did work at the museum and that it matches the string of an author on a certain publication and we can uh, invoke the tool, the author disambiguator to help disambiguate uh, those author name strings and match the publications to actual authors. Um, and there are different ways of doing this. Um, yeah. We can compare different people or different organizations, different taxa, uh, different compounds. Um, essentially, whatever can be profiled can be prepared, uh, compared in principle. It's just that it's not always implemented. Um, so here we have a number of participants in the workshop. We see that uh, there's one um, paper where, uh, where half of those six actually are co-authors. Then we can see the timeline here. Quentin seems to have started publishing earliest amongst the six participants here. Um, we see how the citations developed. This is actually very incomplete, especially in the last few years, um, because we don't really have good workflows for uh, indexing citations yet. And then here we, ha we have the co-author graph, uh, which links a number of publications that these six people are involved in. The next one is uh, redirects. So here look at we, uh, the, we go back to chemicals again. Um, and there we can actually, uh, if, you, if you look at uh, the URL here, we can just type scolia slash pubchem slash and then uh, pubchem identifier or scolia slash cas and then the cas number or scolia slash inchi key and then the inchi key and then we will be redirected to the respective molecule without uh, being required to know what the Wikidata identifier is. Um, this is quite handy because uh, Wikidata 
uh, knows of thousands of external identifiers or thousands of external databases and each of these might have thousands of entries um, and uh, so it can be used to translate uh, identifiers. Um, there is a template so here we have a list which actually is a precursor of what might at some point become um, a profile in Scolia. This is also auto-generated based on a Sparkle query um, and it gives us a range of um, taxa that have an article on the English Wikipedia and that article on the English Wikipedia let me just pick it out here actually uses the templates to link to this, the corresponding Scolia profile so here somewhere at the bottom there should be a Scolia profile yeah so and this then links to the Scolia profile for this particular topic so you get an overview of the people who publish on the topic of the timeline how publications on a topic have changed at some point this should also pop up um, then you get the co-author graph you get topics that co-occur that target topic uh, you can visualize them as a graph as well. Some of them will have a geolocation, so you can plot those on a map. Um, the authors are still being computed. There we go. This is uh, now taking into account citations to and from, so you get also the most cited authors. You can, you can see what journals are publishing works on this topic, most cited works, most cited authors, and sometimes if uh, any of the people who uh, published on the topic have won an award, this would show up here. Yeah, here you see the most recent publications that are indexed by Wikidata. Okay, so then there's a widget. Uh, I'll not do that right now. I'll do let's do the, the time. So what this does is it gives you a link here in the sidebar uh, that allows you to get back to the Scolia profile for this particular thing. In the meantime, the timeline here has loaded. This is a timeline of um, typos uh, in the name of Cinereptitis elegans in the title of papers about this species. So um, just a funny application of uh, the data. Yeah, BibTech um, is something I would be very happy to discuss, but maybe a bit out of focus. And then the taxon compound links so this is just an ordinary uh, Wikidata query, but uh, it could serve as the basis of a Scolia profile um, panel as well. So here you get a number of compounds and the, num the species that are known to have this particular compound. And right now the results, it's just 10. So you see there is a huge gap. Um, and with uh, workshops like this, I hope that we can um, kind of help set the basis for making it easier to bring in such information, also to reuse it from here, Wikidata, in other contexts. Okay, so yeah, I already mentioned that we have a number of such gaps. So uh, if you want to dig deeper, there is a paper about uh, Scolia. And we have Wikidata News, so there's generic updates about uh, Wikidata. Then there's a Wiki, uh, Wikidata Scolia Twitter account. And I would like to acknowledge funding from the Sloan Foundation that helps us develop Scolia. So thank you. I'm now hoping for a good Q&A.